Well, it's Sunday, June 9th, day two of our inflatable paint booth saga, and it's still standing. Sat overnight and held up overnight. My wife come in concerned last night, uh, told me she was afraid this thing was going to blow up. I said it looked like a beached whale. I don't know what she knows about a beached whale. She's never seen one. I have, and they do look like that all puffy until they explode. Anyway, I came out and looked at it, and, and there was really nothing wrong with it. It's fine. It, it is blowing up and blowing out the sides and stuff like that, but that's kind of what I want. So today, I've been working on it some more, and it's taken me all day to do it. That's what happens when you get to be an old man, I guess. It would take me about two or three hours to do that when I was 25, but it took me all day to do it now. Kind of depressing to get old. But anyway, this is what I've been working on. I made four frameworks there. And I'm going to put a timber across the top of it to suspend that wing from to get it up so we can paint it. There's a whole bunch of people who've got YouTube videos and stuff on these inflatable paint booths. And one of the things that several of them had noted was that if the power goes out, that thing deflates. And if it deflates down on your freshly painted surface, it's going to make you cry or find a new source of curse words. So anyway, I've got uh, four frames made here. Uh, these are eight foot two by sixes. These are the same bunch of two by sixes that I used to make the saw horses out of, the work horses out of, to uh, put the wing on. Anyway, I just made a square frame with those, little, little feetsies on them, footsies on them to help support them. And then to keep them from tipping over, there are tie down eyes on those posts in there, on those pilings in there, pillars, whatever you want to call them, those inflatable columns. And I've tied some string on those and out on the top beam of those so that they would stay upright in case it gets to blowing or something gets a little bit erratic in there. So yesterday was a nice day except for it being blustery. And today was a nice day too. It got a little blustery here and there, but mostly it was pretty nice. But the forecast is for it to start raining tonight and for the foreseeable future. This blow up house is not rated for uh, weather, for being wet, and that's why we put the plastic on the top. And that's why I want to leave it inflated like this. So the columns are inflated. There's one pump that inflates the columns to blow the thing up. And then there's another one that pressurizes the inside of this. And with it pressurized, the sides blow out, the side windows blow out, and the top, and you can see that top coming down now after I opened the door. But with the door closed and it pressurized in here, uh, the fabric on the top blows up into a dome. And hopefully, if it stays blown up like that, that'll keep the rain from puddling up on that roof and, and building up on there in big puddles. So let me close this door back up. So this is just the little man door. Like I said, it building these to get kind of tired. Have to sit down and take a break between a couple of them. So I brought my little rocking chair in here and set it up. So this thing is starting to inflate again now, and the ceiling up there is blown up and it makes a pretty good dome up there. So hopefully the air pressure inside of here blowing that up like that will keep the rain from puddling up on there from getting any too heavy on there and it'll keep it uh, running out over the sides. The other thing that having it blow it up like this is is around that door where the zipper is on the door that blows that door out and it picks that seam up off the ground so any water that won't build up and run in through that door there kind of the same thing on the sides here. It blows everything out and picks up the sides of the building up off of the ground. So hopefully that will keep water from running in through those seams on the edges. This stuff is pretty thin and it's probably water permeable as it is. So if any water builds up and runs in here, uh, it might come in through the floor there. We'll have to wait and see. It's supposed to start raining tonight and that will give me an idea of whether I'm going to be able to use this thing or not. But it's nice. He's got these big windows in it. There's plenty of light in here for working in the daytime. You gotta get that fourth framework brought in here, put away, but that thing is too heavy for me to manhandle by myself anymore, so I'll wait till my son comes back and 
have him give me a hand with it. He'll be back here in a half hour, 45 minutes or so. Don't get dark now until after 10 o'clock, so no worries about it getting it done while it's still daylight. All right, well, that's day two. I'm pretty much finished with this now. We'll see how it holds up in the rain tonight. It held up in the wind once we got it tied down. Hopefully we don't get any 60 mile an hour winds. This time of the year we usually don't get those big blows like that. The blustery weather we've had today and yesterday is usually about the limit of it here. For all intents and purposes I'm done with this. Now I've got to work on the other things that I need to start painting. I've got a pretty good leak in my airline in there in the shop so I need to work on that and get that sealed up so the air is not leaking out of my air compressor so bad. Then I need to dig out all my paint supplies and stuff and get those all ready. Once I get everything all ready, then I'll call for some help to get that wing out of the basement and, and put it in here. But the next couple of days are going to be the proof on that, whether that's going to work out or not. See how badly this thing leaks in the rain. It was forecast to start raining about midnight last night. It didn't do it, which is fortunate. I was up all night, outside all night, dealing with a sick dog. I didn't get in until after about 5 o'clock this morning. It did sprinkle a little bit today, and at first it wasn't very much, just a little sprinkle now and then, but it was enough to see how this paint booth was going to hold up in the rain. One of the things about southeast Alaska, if it's not raining right now, it will be. But anyway, it looks like this thing is going to work okay with that plastic on the top of it there. I'm getting a little bit of water inside. I'll go show you what's going on here. One of the things that's happening is this front door, entry door, the big door, is blowed way out and the water comes down on it and runs down the surface of that and then as it goes down around the bottom of it down there it seeps in through the zipper. So we're getting a little bit of water infiltration through that. So we've got nothing coming off of the ceiling and my idea of keeping this inflated was working. I think if I wasn't keeping the positive pressure in here, keeping that one blower going, then that water would puddle up on that ceiling and soak in. And also these seams are not watertight. This fabric is not watertight, but the seams are not watertight. So the water would build up on those seams and stuff and it would just be raining in here. So that door is blowed out. and. I don't know if you see the raindrops or not, but the rain runs down that door and the surface tension keeps it right on it all the way down as it comes around. Then it goes in through that zipper and through the seam created by the zipper. And we got another soft spot or sore spot here. We've got these ventilation openings. They have felt ventilation in them and there's a cover velcroed on the outside of it and the water runs down the fabric and then of course goes right down through that velcro seam and comes down on the inside of that or through that felt fabric so there's some water infiltration there the other thing is it comes down these columns and of course comes down these side walls as it runs down there and you've got these beams that go across the bottom and it puddles up right there in the corners and along the seam there where the columns and the beams meet and it leaks in through those seams right there. None of this is watertight. You can see bubbles in there now where the air comes out of it and of course if you put your hand down there close to any one of those seams you can feel the air coming through it. Like right there in that corner especially but every place there where the plastic is sewn and stitched into the, the beam. So, so far I'm not getting anything coming from overhead, so it's not raining from overhead. So that's good. Now, I just made a little modifications to my plastic over here on this one side. We've got a lot of tie-ups, balls up there on rubber balls, pushed through the fat, uh, plastic with the ro uh, string around it to pull it out. And I had those coming down and there are D-rings down at the bottom of these columns. I had those strings coming down attaching to that to those D-rings which is basically pulling the fabric right around the perimeter the same shape as the building but I just changed those and moved them out to where they're tight 
uh, out to my anchor stakes and that'll pull the plastic edge of it out away from the building a little bit and hopefully more of it will drip down away from the building instead of just by capillary action coming right around it. Well you can see this side over here hasn't leaked as bad as that other side so I may want to go get some more rubber balls. I ran out of rubber balls. So there's what we got right there. There's one of the rubber balls to just push it through the plastic, put a slip knot around the uh, string and put a loop around that ball tighten it on there and that gives a pretty good spot to tie down to for the plastic. There's bound to be some water coming through the floor here because everything is sitting on this tarp and of course the water is going to build up on the tarp here. Uh, if I'd had it just plain on the sand it would run through the sand but since I've got it on a tarp the water is going to stay on that tarp and, and puddle up in here and probably just soak in through the floor. But I wasn't really worried about it on the floor. What I was mainly worried about is it raining in here. And I think as long as I keep this inflated, and I don't mean the columns inflated, the building inflated, I mean positive pressure inside the whole thing so the roof stays inflated like that and the water will run right off of it. And so the only thing we'll get is maybe some infiltration along the sides. So I would be a lot happier if everything was completely watertight, but this is as good as I expected, as good as, like I said, I could always hope it would be perfect, but this isn't too bad. As long as the floor is just, just the floor is wet and it's not raining in here, I can work with this. We'll see how this goes. It'll take me a day or so to get my airlines all configured and stuff. By that time we should have a pretty steady rain and see how it's going to hold up in the rain.